I'm gonna give you some essential SEO tips specifically tailored for WordPress website. So if you're someone looking to increase the amount of organic traffic that your website is receiving, keep watching. Hi everyone, it's Tony, and today we're gonna be talking about one of my least favorite marketing subjects, SEO. See, here's the thing, SEO is boring. It takes time, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of work to master. And sometimes it can even be expensive if you're looking to take shortcuts or cut corners and playing the SEO game, let's face it, more often than not feels like you're doing a lot of work that may or may not be rewarded by the almighty Google God sitting over at Silicon Valley. But unfortunately, if you're running an online business, you have to learn how to play this game because having a website that isn't optimized to capture organic traffic is like having, it's like having an incredible surf shop with the best surfing boards, accessories and expertise, but it's hidden away in the middle of a desert where there's no sea and no waves to be surfed. With that said, Arno, let's go surfing. Almost all of the organic traffic online goes to the websites that rank at the very top of the search engine results which means that most pages on, on the internet never really get seen by anyone. And so our goal by optimizing our WordPress website for SEO is to make sure that we can have it rank at the very top of those results to try to grab some of that organic traffic. Now, how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at how Google determines which pages deserve to rank at the very top. Brian Dean, who is one of the most influential SEO authorities from the last decade, did a massive study about this. He compared different websites competing for the same keywords and came up with some great and interesting conclusions. Your content needs to be relevant and relevance is measured by a few different factors. Domain authority, which you increase by having other websites linking back to your content and by creating content over an extended period of time. He also says that content quality and depth can actually be measured and the higher the quality of your content, the better you'll rank on Google. And you know, I mean that that one sounds pretty obvious. And something interesting that he found out is that there is no correlation between page speed and first page Google rankings. Now, the study that Brian Dean did was performed in 2020, so three years ago. So I would take this last one with, with a little bit of a grain of salt. I mean, I'm sure that if your website takes half a second extra to load, but has better content than a competing website that loads a little bit faster then Google shouldn't penalize you too much for that. But I personally like my websites to load pretty much instantly considering how attention span for human beings are close to minimal these days. Getting backlinks from as many different highly reputable websites appears to have an impact too. And the length of your content also matters. The average Google first page results contains about 1500 words in them. And one of my own tips that I'll throw in here, which is something that I try to, that we try to do here at Thrive Themes is we try to keep content updated, even for blog posts that we created like five years ago. And this goes hand by hand with the idea of keeping your content relevant. Um, here at Thrive Themes, for example, we keep track of blog posts that we know that rank pretty well on Google and we make sure we update them every few months or at least once a year, twice a year, probably once every six months to make sure that we keep on uh, providing as much possible value through those pieces of, uh, pieces of content as we possibly can. Now, most people, when they start working on their WordPress websites, they spend a lot of time working on their homepage and very little time working on their content pages. Your content pages are your blog posts, your product pages, your sales pages, and also your category pages, which are oftentimes referred to as archive pages. And believe it or not, this is actually a bad move on behalf of everyone who has ever done this, including me. Because the truth is most of your organic traffic is almost never going to come through your homepage or even your blog page. I see too many people spending a lot of time designing like a cool looking homepage and a pretty nice looking uh, blog page. When the reality is that your blog page is almost never going to rank on Google. And most people aren't going to discover you because of your homepage. Think about it. A blog page in it of itself is rarely made up of relevant keywords. It's usually just a page with a top banner that says blog and then just a list of, of your most recent content pieces. All WordPress pages come with a blog page by default, which is why I feel like a lot of people think of it as being a super important page. But the blog, the blog page has no structure and it's mostly just made up of a lot of articles that oftentimes 
have nothing to do with each other when you put them side by side. The majority of organic users are going to discover your website through your content. And this brings me to a big SEO tip that you should try to live by, which is to structure your website using a silo architecture. A silo architecture consists of dividing your website into subsections, which are specialized on different topics. For example, let's break down Thrive Themes silo architecture into a diagram tree. We have our homepage and some other pages that we need to have like a, like a terms and condition page, a contact page. But when you move past those required pages that we need to have because our customers oftentimes need to find them, our site is structured into product pages, which are properly optimized with high relevant keywords. And then we have archive pages, which again, divide our content into different topics. We have an archive page about web design. We have an archive page about content marketing. We have an archive page about how to use our tools. And these archive pages are fully customizable thanks to Thrive Theme Builder. And you can design them to look great and to be optimized for search intent. Just for the sake of giving you another example, let's quickly draw a diagram tree for a silo structure website that focuses on entrepreneurship. You may have your homepage, which again, will be a good page for recurring visitors to find you and learn a little bit more about the products or services that you have to offer. Then you may have a page for a course that you may be selling, an about page, a contact page, your blog page, and then we get to the meat of your website, which are your content pages, the ones that have a high potential of ranking on Google. You may have an archive page that talks about podcasting, and in there you may have a guide on how to effectively run a podcast, as well as a list of your content pieces that deal with podcasting. You may also have a category page about online course creation. And again, you want to build out a well-optimized page about how to create online courses, include high relevant keywords in there. And again, throw in a list of all of your content pieces that deal with course creation. And you know, you may have another category page about tools that you like to use to run your business and so forth and so on. You see how instead of just throwing a bunch of articles into a blog page, we're creating dedicated category pages that focus on one topic about our business. We're optimizing them and designing them to look good and to address user search intent. And we present them with a list of content pieces that they can be interested in. Unless I'm building a one page website, I always like to build my websites following a silo architecture. When you first start blogging or just about start creating online content, chances are you're going to make mistakes from an SEO perspective and that's okay. I mean, you're here, you're learning, but just as it's important to understand what Google likes to see in content in order to be able to rank higher in the search engine, you also need to understand what it doesn't like to see. So here are a few red flags to take into account. Okay, Google hates duplicate content. So this may sound obvious, but don't go around stealing content from other websites. Even if you're using ChatGPT, Jasper or other AI tool to rephrase the content that you're steal stealing or thinking about stealing, chances are Google is smarter than you and will find out. But duplicate content, to be honest, isn't just about stealing content from others. I found a lot of people that have started their websites by cloning previous websites so that they wouldn't have to design the backend of WordPress from scratch. And they brought over a bunch of duplicate pages on blog posts that sometimes they didn't even bother removing. So be careful with, the, uh, with those types of things as well. Spamming backlinks on other people's websites should be avoided as well. If you're thinking about paying someone on Fiverr 20 bucks so that he can go around posting your website's link on crappy websites, just save it, you know, use the 20 bucks to buy yourself lunch this weekend. It's gonna be money better invested. And a big red flag is not optimizing your content for search intent. And I, I was touching on search intent a little bit earlier. And what search intent means is exactly what it means and what it sounds like. If your content isn't addressing the intent behind a user's search query, then you're shooting yourself in a foot. For example, if I type on Google, best restaurants in New York, a user likely has the intent of finding good recommendations of dining options in the city. And that's exactly what my content piece should try to provide. The last one shouldn't be a surprise to anyone because I've already spent a lot of time teaching you all how to build mobile friendly websites using Thrive Architect. But if your site today in 2023 is not mobile friendly, considering that half of the global traffic is done from a mobile device, I'm going to be upset. Okay, hopefully you found this video helpful and it gave you some clarity as to how you should start focusing on SEO for your WordPress website. 
And if you have any questions, I'm gonna be down in the comment section below. Happy to chit chat with any of you guys. And also down in the description box, you'll find a link to grab Thrive Suite. With it, you'll be able to create high converting websites that are completely SEO optimized without writing a single line of code. Truly appreciate your time and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.